All right, we're going to get into a quick lesson right here. And it has uh, a few different answers to, to the question. All right, I want to say all praise to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. All right, um, I think I'll entitle this lesson, Why Do I Have to Repent If There's No Free Will? Why do I have to repent or why should I repent if there's no free will? All right, and it's going to come from a, you know, a question on the comment board. And first, before I get into it, a quick observation. Now, when you look at the individual's name, God kills, God hates, right? Coming on our comment board with a question. And you see this oftentimes, and we don't know for sure if this person is an atheist. Or one of the other brothers, when I shared the question, brother said that um, it's 100% guaranteed this person. He didn't say it like that, but he said he strongly feels this person is an atheist and I would agree but I know there are a lot of demented Israelites out there that when you learn the truth you got a kind of like a frustrated zeal you start learning and you learn that there's no free will but instead of it and it's really just another avenue of rejection you start you learn the word a little bit and you know what it's all about and it's really just the Lord's spirit is not residing with you so instead of it being a sincere question or humble it comes off as like an irritated zeal you know but that's because the Lord is starting already starting to reject you. So you're not able to fully understand. So instead of asking an intelligent question in a polite way, you ask an irritated question like an asshole. That's why you got blocked. Anyway, it, the, uh, from the person God hates, God kills, God kills, God hates. And also you can tell in the name. You see the name, you think it's somebody, okay, he might be getting it. He understands it. The most high does kill. The most high does hate. Yeah, but it, he, he got an attitude about that. And when you go to his page, there is no, no videos. <clears throat> but this, I'm answering the question because it's, it'll be edifying to the flock, not for that individual. So, you know, brothers and sisters, if you know, you can learn from this, that'll be great. All right. So the person says the word repent, I believe, I believe means to feel sorry. But how do you repent? And the word repent when broken down. Right. And let's let's see if we can go to the online etymology dictionary. I know the word re means to do again and penance to show sorrow, I believe is how you would how you would say it. But let's just look it up anyway. Repent here. You know, re again, show penance. Right? And the brother said, you know, the person said to feel sorry, which is a part of it. It says right here, repent. 1300 circle 1300 repenting be grieved over one's past and seek forgiveness see that feel such regret for sins crimes or omissions as produces a mem produces amendment of life right you sorry for it but not only are you sorry you amend your life you change you do something again you show penance again right it says uh let's see here make sorry the distinction between regret and repent is made in many modern languages, but is absent in older periods. To repent is to regret so deeply as to change the mind or course of conduct and consequence and development and develop new mental and spiritual habits. That's excellent. I really like that. So, you know, and then they use the scripture, um, Genesis six, all right, which is really not that great to use that because it, it, the Lord didn't repent. You know, he planned all along to destroy uh, the earth with a flood. OK, so he didn't have to repent. It's just they don't understand the connotation of the implication of the word being used there. Let's go back to the question. The word repent me, uh, I believe, means to feel sorry. But how do you repent if you have no free will? What's the point of the word repent? And then the bottom, he says, if if he made Jake stiff necked. And blinded, it says in blinded. I hate when people do that. Don't say in. It's and, A-N-D. Blinded them on purpose. These are the results of the Lord's actions. Well, you kind of got, you know, if you said it in a better way, it, which is actually true. The Most High has uh, something called predestination. But before we get into that, I want to give you another scripture too. I want to give you Deuteronomy 28, 64, because a lot of Israelites, you have this attitude that why do I need to repent? It's the Lord that did it. Yeah, but this is the thing. This is the most highest movie. He does what he wants to do. This is true. But when we're scattered and cast off into all nations, in the curses it says that you were going to worship the gods 
of the other, you know, that you never worshiped before. So in your zeal, <clears throat> even growing up from a kid, when you was called known God and Jesus or whatever name you were called known, you were in ignorance called known an idol. So every Israelite everywhere must repent. Regardless of whether it's, it's predestinate, you're pre predestinated for salvation or not, you must repent because we're all guilty of idolatry. None of us, there's no, pretty much no Israelite on the planet knew the names of the Father and Son in the true sense before you woke up to the truth of being an Israelite. And I don't give a damn who you are. You may say, I knew I was an Israelite from birth. Okay, but you didn't have the right names because the door of repentance, you know, the, the gospel had not started being preached yet. The gospel being preached in the Hebrew is like awakening is a, is a peculiar, not peculiar, a particularly an end time thing. Anyway, the scripture says, Deuteronomy 28, 64, the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. Did we get scattered from one end of the earth even until the other? Did we get scattered? Yeah, we did. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known even wood and stone. You know, people get in the habit of reading one part of the scripture, but you don't read the second part. When we were scattered among the nations, we all worshiped false gods and idols. Okay? So you need to repent because of that. That's why in the book of Acts, part of the reconciliation is coming back. Let's see, 319. Turning back to the Lord. And away from these um, different religions and false gods you've been involved in. Acts 319. Repent ye therefore and be converted. See that you got not only repent, but you also have to be converted that your sins may be blotted out. You want your sins blotted out? You got to repent and be converted. You can't say you repent, but then still call on God and Jesus, God and Christ. What the fuck is that? And the reason I said it cuss like that is because I want you to understand that those names are false. You still got a lot of Israelites that, that call on those, you know, they ain't even names. Those are titles. But how can you say you truly repented? When you were scattered in all nations and you're worshiping the gods and the idols of the other nations, and then when you start, and then you say you were Israelite, okay, which means you're woke to the truth, but you're not born again when you call on the names of the other gods because that's the name you was always called on. How are you going to say you fully awakened, but then you're going to call on God? You've been saying that since you was three. Since the first time you could talk, you knew there was God and there was Jesus or whatever, right? So you need to change that. You're not converted. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So there you go. And you, let me get the, the, the last line. I don't want to leave that out. And he shall send you how shall Hamashiach, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which the Most High has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. So that's you know add that into the uh, answer and into the edification now let's get a little bit further into it so let's go back to the question but i wanted to read that so you have to understand that we all have to repent you can't take the stance you don't need to repent you know if it's, it's no free will we know that there's no free will but you still have to repent the lord still expects us to do as he told us to do now whether or not you got the spirit of the lord on you and whether you're one of his chosen Hey, that's all up to him. All of it's up to him. But those that have his spirit enough to, to repent, you ain't going to be arguing. You know, you sound like an Edomite almost. How can the Lord punish me for doing wickedness when he put it on me to do the wickedness? Well, that's your lot for number one. But don't you feel somewhat sorrowful as Israelites you would? So the dude says the word repent, I believe, means to feel sorry. But how do you repent if you have no free will? What's the point of the word repent? If he made Jake stiff neck and blinded them on purpose, these are the results of the Lord's actions. Okay, what well, you do, you have predestination. This is 1 Peter 1 and 1. Peter, an apostle of Yahweh Shai, a Mashiach, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. These are all Israelites, Israelite foreigners, right? Groups of Israelite foreigners. Elect according to the foreknowledge of the Most High, the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Yahweh Shah Mashiach, grace unto you and peace multiplied. Now, if we go to this right here, to the word foreknowledge, and it says it's prognosis, prognosis, 
Let me see. Strong's G, 4268, prognosis. 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 And what is the person that predicts things called? A prognosticator. Right? They predict something before it happens. So the word foreknowledge says foreknowledge, forethought, prearrangement. See? It's a prearrangement by the Heavenly Father. So the person is right. There's no free will. And it's almost like they're scoffing that notion. But there is no free will. It's all set up in advance. Forethought, foreknowledge. But the Most High can still make you you're guilty because he owns all flesh. We all belong to the Lord. It says foreknowledge. Let me see here if I get something. A foreknowledge used only for divine knowledge. Foreknowledge is one aspect of omniscience. It is implied in the Most High's warnings, promises, and predictions. The Most High's foreknowledge involves his electing grace, but this does not preclude human will. No, that's, that's going off. That's going off. He foreknows the exercise of faith which brings salvation. Esau always doing too much. But you know what? That even is good for this lesson. So there's a foreknowledge of the Heavenly Father, meaning to know before. That's what foreknowledge means. As a matter of fact, Let's just see right here if I can look it up. Foreknowledge, awareness of something. Awareness of something before it happens or exists. See, so the most I had the foreknowledge. Right? Uh, yeah, that's what I want out of there. Let's also go to Ephesians 1. And I'm just going to jump right in here to verse 4. It says, according as he had chosen us in him... Before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So the Lord chose his elect before the foundation of the earth. But guess what? Being of your of you know, whether you're of his elect or not, you're going to have to turn back to the Lord because that's part of the movie. That's part of the steps that you have to go down. Just because you might be of the elect doesn't mean it. The most I gonna put that in your spirit automatically to turn back to him. We were all cut off and led astray. And we went our own way, even as the Israelites. Before we knew we were Israelites, we were living after our own tenants, doing whatever we wanted to do, living after the desires of the world. So when you wake up to the fact that you're Israelites, what's the natural course of action going to be for a member of the elect? You're going to turn back to the Lord. It goes on and says, so he chose us before him that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us. Unto the adoption of children by Yahweh Shah Hamashiach to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. See that? So he pre predestinated us according to the according to his his will. Okay? And just hold on here. So I want to look at this word predestinated. And it's the word pro rezo. And it says to predetermine, decide beforehand. In the New Testament of the Most High decreeing from eternity to foreordain a point beforehand. Look at this. To limit in advance. So the Most High already limited the amount of elect that there would be. The amount of chosen. But at the same time, he also predestined the rest of those that are not of the elect to condemnation. Predetermined, determined before, ordained, predestinate. But it still doesn't exclude you having to repent. It doesn't exclude that. And I wanted to see here. Um, I don't know if I looked this up already or not. Um, yeah, NLT. The Most High decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Yahweh Shah Mashiach. You know, they try to make it seem as though it's just, if you, like, still like you're choosing. No. Having predestinated us into the adoption of children. By Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. So that was why it was important that the Savior came along and died on the cross. Now he goes on in verse 9, having made known unto us the mystery of his will. Right, he made known the mystery of his will unto us. That's why only the elect can get this truth. I gotta go real fast now. Forgive me, brothers. Now I want to go back to first Peter one and one. And I want to get another alternate version. I think it's this one here. Um, yeah, that ain't really what I wanted. We're just going to move on real quick. I want to hit a few of these. Oh, it's the book of Jude. Look at this. This is Jude. So in like wise, in like manner, those that are not chosen are also 
uh, uh, put on that path by the Lord. This is Jude 1 and 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only law of power and our Lord, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. What does that mean? Men who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. But when you go right here to the... Uh, into the uh, let's see what what version yeah the CSB for some people who were designated for this judgment long ago have come in by stealth they are ungodly turning the grace of our God into sensuality and denying Yahweh Hamashiach our only Master and Lord and when you when you look at the word designated it's like predestined it says designate appoint someone to a specified position that's fire. In the verb sense, appoint someone to a specified position. So if you're a damn scoffer or a demon, whatever you are, the Lord put you in that light. It says right here, for there was certain, there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord power and our Lord, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. You see that? So they were appointed to that position, such as Vocab Malone. And the Edomite Christians and even wicked ass Israelites. You were put in that position. Because check this out. This is Romans 9 and 11. Showing you that Edomites. This is why we try to get. See it's it's almost like a catch 22. We try to prove to these devils in the scriptures that they can't make it. But they don't believe it because it wasn't given to them to believe. Because they are the wicked. I hope you can see that. That's like a hard puzzle. Some of them you know, may understand but they're, gonna, they're never going to admit it. Just like with Jacob and Esau in the beginning. Romans 9 and 11. I start at 10. It says, And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children being not yet born. See that? But it was, they weren't even born yet. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of the Most High, according to election, might stand not of works, but of him that calleth. Right. It didn't have nothing to do with their works. The Most High chose Jacob to love and Esau to hate. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. And it was that way from the foundation of the world. Nobody can change it. There's nothing you can do. You can't teach Edomites how to be righteous because it's not in them to, to learn to be righteous. This is why they're never going to understand the breakdowns. They're never going to understand the true mysteries of the scriptures this is why they they try so hard trying to prove that all nations can be saved and yet there's nothing they can do it's almost like with vocab malone he's trying to take a dull axe and chop down this gigantic redwood tree that's made out of cement he's just hacking away and nothing's happening he's just beating his head against the brick wall isaiah 26 and 10 let favor be showed to the wicked and the edomites are the wicked read malachi 1 and 3 on down it proves it Yet will he not learn righteousness. See, the wicked can't learn righteousness. Daniel chapter 12 tells you that. The wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand. But the wise shall understand. Let favor be showed to the wicked. Yet will he not learn righteousness. In the land of uprightness will he deal unjustly and will not behold the majesty of the Lord. You see that? So he can't even learn righteousness. And it was made that way because his purpose wasn't to be put here to be saved. His purpose was to come here and to be destroyed. We all have a particular lot, even on down to the very individual, but also our nations. Jacob was made to be a vessel of mercy. Esau was made to be a vessel of wrath fitted to destruction. This is Proverbs 16 and 4. The Lord have made all things for himself. Yeah, even the wicked for the day of evil. You can't take one of the sons of the wicked or a few of them, a handful of them and say they they're going to be saved. Because the Lord didn't create them for salvation. He created them to destroy them. Just like he made Jacob to repent. But even on this side, I mean, uh, created Jacob to be vessels of mercy. But even on this side, not every Israelite is going to make it. And we all have to, the ones that are going to be saved are going to follow that particular path. They're going to come out of the world. They're going to turn back from the gods of the nations, from the idolatry that they were a part of. And they're going to repent. Whether they, we got free will or not, there's no other way that you can do this. This is the way that the Lord wants it, wants it to play out. As we brought out Deuteronomy 28, 64, you know, and then we read other scriptures dealing with predestination. So while we are predestined and there's no free will, 
the Lord has a particular way everything that must must be done. And every Israelite must repent. You know, and that's just the bottom line. If you can't get it, then you know what that means. That means that the Lord didn't give it to you. So therefore, you can be sure that you're not one of his. You have you would have been rejected by the Lord. So that's it. This has been uh why do I need to repent if there's no free will? We will see you again soon with another lesson, Lord willing. All praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Shalom.